things that might have been uncomfortable for me as a black person to capture, but he has this thing with the way he frames stuff, it draws you in. You know, the first plane was an accident, the second one was an attack, and the third one was a declaration of war. For me, it's about two things, abuse of power and weaponization of the law. I see y'all flying a Confederate flag on top of the state house. I said, that's not right. Your family cares about you. You got people who care about you. They were hostile. They were venomous that their country somehow was being taken away from them. It is uh, not only great to be back in Raleigh, it is also nice to get out of Washington. Welcome to the 43rd Annual News and Documentary Emmy Awards, Documentary Night, live from the Palladium in New York City. And now, please welcome our host from Vice News, Peabody, and three-time Emmy Award winner, Alzo Slade. Well, hello, good people, hello. They didn't give me a microphone so I can walk around freely. So welcome to my TED Talk, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you all look amazing. You all look great. You look like you smell amazing, too. I thought, I thought when I put on this tuxedo, I thought uh, I looked amazing until I looked in the mirror and I saw an Uber Black XL driver <laughs> staring back out at me. But, this show is going to be amazing. We're going to have a great night. And let me be the first to say welcome to the News and Documentary Emmy Awards and the first ever in-person Documentary Emmy Ceremony. I mean, look, we are, we're back in each other's faces. This is great. Now, there are some people that are still a bit skittish about this whole, you know, pandemic, whatever thing is happening right now. So if you, if you have an inclination to cough tonight, <laughs> I suggest you either hold it in <laughs> or disguise it as laughter. <laughs> See, you all just coughed in, in unison just now. But really, it is really so good to be here and to congratulate folks with handshakes and hugs because before last year, when my good buddy C.J. Hunt was hosting this show virtually, it was like we were in a mosaic of squares, you know, wearing a suit jacket with no pants and no shoes. At least <laughs> that was me. But now, not only do we get to present our head-to-toe ensemble tonight, guess what? This night is ours only. We have it. because. If you remember, uh, like, back in the before times, like 2019 BC, as in before COVID, <laughs> we had to share the evening with our colleagues from news. But they had their ceremony last night. And I'm sure they're now hungover on assignment, waiting for their next assignment. <laughs> so we have this beautiful venue, the Palladium in Times Square, all to ourselves. And I mean, And let's be honest, y'all kind of deserve your own night to yourselves. You all wake, you, you work too hard, you know? And plus, and plus, before when the ceremony was combined, it was kind of long. <laughs> I mean, by the end of it, we were nominating the films for the next year, you know what I'm saying? 
So tonight, there's really no better way to honor excellence in documentary than by having the opportunity to focus exclusively on you, our 131 documentary nominees. And, and I gotta say, I have a special place in my heart for documentary filmmakers. Um, you remember when we were a kid in class and they would roll in that big TV strapped to the cart <laughs> and all of us in class were like, hallelujah. <laughs> we don't have to work. We get to watch TV, you know. And we were visually transported to another place in time that we didn't have access to. And you fast forward to tonight, this moment right now, you all continue to expand our world with the stories you choose to tell and the artistic choices that you make. And you make it look easy when we all know that it ain't. You had to deal with a lot. COVID, scheduling issues, characters backing out, and budgeting. Let's talk about budgeting, because there's some broke filmmakers in here tonight <laughs> that spend a lot of time refreshing their browser trying to see if they got more money on their GoFundMe page. <laughs> but look at us now. You're at the Emmys. And, and tonight, tonight is a testament to your creativity, your passion, and your perseverance. And it's an honor to be your conductor and host on this choo-choo train of celebration for you guys. And whether you get to read that speech that's written on that index card in your pocket or on your phone, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. You made it here, and we're celebrating you. <laughs> now, now, listen, I know all of us in here are ready to get this party started. Um, but let's take a quick breath. Because, you know, as documentary filmmakers, we tell important stories of tragedy and triumph. And unfortunately, there are people in Florida and the Caribbean right now experiencing the former. So we want to say that our thoughts and prayers are with them as they face the effects of Hurricane Ian. Our best to everyone and their loved ones. And this is a tough pivot right now because <laughs> after that depressing thought, I got to start the show. <laughs> so speaking of important stories, here's a look at the artists, activists, and cultural touchstones spotlighted in the Outstanding Arts and Cultural Documentary category. And the nominees are. A Choice of Weapons, inspired by Gordon Parks. HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Street Gang, How We Got to Sesame Street. HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Paper and Glue. MSNBC Films, MSNBC. The one and only Dick Gregory, Showtime. The real Charlie Chaplin, Showtime. And the Emmy goes to Street Gang. How we got to Sesame Street. Accepting the Emmy, Trevor Crafts, producer, PGA. And so I, I use my insecurities to understand the bird, mm -hmm. and but Oscar has no such insecurities at all. <laughs> the further you stay away from my can, the better. Keep moving there. Oh, over here, Oscar? Yeah. Just keep walking, bright eyes. So I also play Oscar the Grouch. Huh. Do I get paid? Well, no. I get the money. You bastard. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much to the Academy. Um, this is absolutely absolutely fantastic. Uh, first and foremost, thank you so much to my wife producing partner, the risk to my reason, uh, the reason to my risk, Ellen. Uh, thank you so much to all of our friends at HBO Documentary Films. Lisa Heller, our champion, our mentor, Nancy, uh, Anna Klein, everyone, all of our friends at Sesame Workshop, Jody Nussbaum, uh, who, who championed this film. Um, uh, just so many people uh, 
Marilyn Agrillo, our fantastic director, Lisa Diamond, our producer, Rich Remsberg, our amazing documentary and uh, research producer, um, everyone at Reintraub Tobin, um, everybody's just done such a huge amount of work. The gang um, that produced this amazing film or this amazing show so many years ago, Stephen Christie, who gave us the idea in the first place, uh, Brian O'Shea, our sales agent, and uh, everybody at Weintraub Tobin, we thank you so much for this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do you all know that person at the dinner party who reads that Pepto-Bismol colored paper, the Financial Times? And they're always waxing poetic about numbers and the market and how much they know. And you're like, whoa, bro, relax. You're boring me to death. <laughs> but the information is interesting. And there has to be a better way to convey this information. Well, in our next category, these filmmakers have made all this stuff interesting. <laughs> so let's see how five of the best accomplish this enormous feat. In the category of outstanding business and economic documentary, the nominees are The Power of the Fed, Frontline and Chasing the Dream, PBS. Storm Lake, Independent Lens, PBS. Entangled, Local USA, World Channel. The Big Squeeze, Vice News, Vice. WeWork, or the making and breaking of a $47 billion unicorn, Hulu. And the winner is We Work, or the making and breaking of a 47 billion unicorn. Ro Accepting the Emmy, Ross Dinnerstein, producer. Real estate. Guys, I need no sounds. If you're moving and making a sound and I'm speaking, freeze. Real estate is going through a fundamental shift. From a fixed cost per seat uh. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh boy. Thank you to the Academy. Thank you to this guy, Jed Rothstein. What a great director, great partner, great friend. Thank you to our friends at Hulu, our other partners, Olive Hill, our team at Campfire Studios. All of these people, uh, my wife, my, my kids, Adam Newman for, for being an idiot, but uh, thank you, Adam. <laughs> thank you to Andreessen for giving him more money, so we'll be doing a sequel, everybody. It's exciting. Um, it's just an honor to be here with all of you great filmmakers. Can't say I ever imagined this would actually happen, so thanks, Jed, real quick. <laughs> thanks very much, it's a great honor. Thank you. Please join me now in welcoming your esteemed colleague, Christine Stalakis, who will take charge of the next few awards, because I'm sure you guys are tired of seeing me already. Christine is nominated tonight in Outstanding Social Issue Documentary for her first feature documentary, Pray Away. The film, yes. I mean, first one, overachiever, can we say, Christine? <laughs> The film is a thoughtful and personal exploration of the controversial practice of conversion therapy and can be seen on Netflix. Welcome, Christine. Thank you, Alzo. I am delighted to be here on behalf of Netflix for such a meaningful evening, and I'm honored to be sharing the space with such vast talent. Often documentaries are judged more for their subject, um, are judged more for their subject than their craft. So I treasure this opportunity to focus on the brilliant craftspeople we depend on. We begin with the artists who take our abstract notions and give them shape. Here are the nominees for outstanding graphic design and art direction documentary. Camp Confidential: America's Secret Nazis. Netflix. Dreamland, The Burning of Black Wall Street, CNN Films, CNN. 
Coded, The Hidden Love of J.C. Leindecker, MTV Documentary Films. Gossip, Showtime. Missing Chapter, Box. And the Emmy goes to Dreamland, The Burning of Black Street, Black Wall Street, CNN Films. Accepting the Emmy, Salima Karoma, Director. Tulsa was a powder keg, needing only something to set the community alight. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was a, such a hard story to tell with such um, uh, a tragic, traumatic um, story that we were trying to tell. Um, and thank you to Spring Hill, LeBron, Mav, Jamal for having courage to tell this story. Um, thank you to my partners at CNN, um, Amy, Alex, Courtney, thank you for letting me dream big with the animation. I've never done animation in my life. Thank you guys for trusting me to do it. Um, thank you, Phil and Jamila, for my frantic phone calls, picking them up when I thought it wasn't gonna work. It worked. So thank you guys so much. Um, my team, um, Meister, who um, understood I wanted beautiful periwinkles and fuchsias to tell this story about black people. So um, I don't know who else I forgot. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Unlike many a feature film, documentary doesn't rely on million dollar special effects or global superheroes. Instead, a documentary lives and dies by its story structure and the precise word choice, and that's where the craft of writing comes in. Oh my gosh, they're having the best day. In the outstanding, or on the category of outstanding writing, documentary, the nominees are. Nine Eleven: One Day in America, National Geographic. The Forever Prisoner, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. The Elephant and the Termite, Nature, PBS. The Rescue, National Geographic. Outlaw Motorcycle Clubs, Trafficked with Mariana Von Zeller, National Geographic. Romance Scams. Trafficked with Mariana Von Zeller, National Geographic. And the Emmy goes to The Elephant and the Termite, PBS. Accepting the Emmy, Fred Kaufman, Executive Producer. A dung beetle is a walnut-sized package of determination. But he is also upside down, pushing backwards, so he can't see where he's going. Wow, thank you. Uh, Mark Diebel, the writer, could not be here tonight, but let me take a moment to explain to you the elephant and the termite, because uh, you had, would have no idea what it's about. It's about the creation and the biography of an African waterhole. And to create an African waterhole, you need an elephant and you need a termite. And the rest would take an hour to explain, but that's, how, that's what it's about. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Next, we come to outstanding editing. Our editors are everything. Our sculptors, shamans, sometimes even our shakedown artists. And for that, your directors are indebted. For outstanding editing, documentary, the nominees are. Nine Eleven Inside the President's War Room, Apple TV Plus. 
The first wave, National Geographic. A choice of weapons inspired by Gordon Parks. HBO documentary films, HBO. Four hours at the Capitol, HBO documentary films, HBO. Toxic Pigs of Fukushima, Vice News, Vice. And the Emmy goes to the first wave, National Geographic. Accepting the Emmy, Francisco Bello, editor. There were like maybe one, two, three patients that we kind of heard about, like whispered about. They're telling me you're not needing as much oxygen as you did is this a COVID patient? Is this not a COVID patient? The infection kind of went into his bones. And now I have a list where pretty much all of the patients have COVID-19. Wow. Editors, we, we, we need paper, so I'm going to look at notes. Um, so on behalf of all of us here and the full editorial team, because there's a lot of us, more than all of us here, some of you here tonight, um, we extend our gratitude to the Academy, to the voters, um, and also for giving documentary craft this night, this moment. Um, thanks to Nat Geo, Hulu, Neon, participant, but also to Northwell, LIJ, for giving us the access to do what no one else did, to look inside one hospital, but basically every hospital, in this country, in the world, um, and to the families and the health workers that let us in. Uh, I've just spent a week in a hospital in ICU, and I've just witnessed the work that people do day in, day out. They're heroes. Um, to our family, our crew, thank you. This means a lot. Have a good night. What's a documentary if no one knows about it? I know some of you are thinking, mm, nothing new. Though it may feel that way, that's not always the case. So let's, let's take a look at what stood out this year when it came to publicizing our films. In the category of Outstanding Promotional Announcement, the nominees are... Nine Eleven: One Day in America, National Geographic. Becoming Cousteau. Disney Plus. The First Wave, National Geographic. History of the Sitcom Campaign, CNN. Trafficked with Mariana Von Zeller, National Geographic. And the Emmy goes to 9-11, One Day in America, National Geographic. Accepting the Emmy, Daniela Delgado, writer and producer. Everything you got, the World Trade Center, now. Oh my God. And it was 30 people in the northeast corner. Gotta get everybody out. Thank you to the survivors and first responders of 9-11. Thank you for sharing your stories 20 years later. Um, to the Nat Geo creative team, Chris Spencer, Tyler Corba, Aaron Newsom, Carla Danix, Mari Cruz, Isabella, um, Addie Morrison, and the whole Zealot team. Thank you for being great collaborators. And to my mom, sé que está viendo y sin vos no estaría aquí. Gracias.
again. You know, we usually save the best for last, and it's mainly because if we didn't, you jokers would leave early. <laughs> but when I say best, I'm talking about the 10 outstanding films nominated for best documentary. And each of these worthy nominations will be shared with you throughout the evening. So let's take a look at our first two documentaries nominated in the category of best documentary. The first wave, National Geographic. Cares about you. Your family cares about you. Your family cares about you. You got people who care about you. You got people that care about you. A thousand cuts, frontline, PBS. My stay last night at the NBI really made me think about what this is all about, right? And for me, it's about two things, abuse of power and weaponization of the law. This isn't just about me, and it's not just about Rappler. I'll be very transparent, because I have done nothing. Sorry. There's a reason every odyssey is named after the odyssey. Because the world's most famous story isn't about staying put. It's about being there. So for those who want a story to tell, we have a world full of places to start. ABC News, honored for excellence with 41 Emmy nominations. More than any news organization anywhere. Thank you for making ABC News America's number one most trusted, most watched, and most honored news. The 43rd Annual News and Documentary Emmy Awards are brought to you by Four Roses, the official bourbon of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. Please welcome the chairman of the National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Terry O'Reilly. Hey, good evening, everyone, and thank you for applauding for the bourbon. <laughs> um, it's great to have you here tonight for our, the second night of our two-night celebration of the 43rd Annual News and Documentary Emmys. There is just no doubt that this is a golden age for documentary filmmaking. There are more being made now than ever, there's more being invested in them now than ever, and there are more being watched now than ever before. There have never been more opportunities for talented filmmakers to create compelling documentaries and to share them with audiences in the US and abroad. The big challenge, unfortunately, is there's only so much time to enjoy them. It is our privilege here at the National Academy to honor the distinguished filmmakers in this room whose works are among the very best in the industry and are thus nominated for the Emmy, which is our industry's gold standard. So thank you to all. Congratulations to the nominees, especially to all of you who will take an Emmy home tonight. The box is really big. Um, and thank you all for joining us for this very special evening. Now let's get to our next presenter. Please help me to welcome Tamara Shugalu, who is here on behalf of PBS and nominated tonight for Unresolved, a really remarkable multi-platform experience that examined a federal effort to grapple with America's racist killings. Thank you for, <laughs> thank you for having me, Terry. I speak confidently for all the filmmakers gathered here tonight that we appreciate the Academy's effort in sponsoring this evening for us and in supporting the documentary community. Now let's get to some awards. In the category of Outstanding Lighting Direction and Scenic Design, the, do the nominees are... Three A Studio Build, MSNBC. 9-11, One Day in America, 
National Geographic. Andre Day Performance, ABC News, Soul of a Nation, ABC. The Lost Sons, CNN Films, CNN. Procession, Netflix. And the Emmy goes to Andra Day Performance, ABC News, Soul of a Nation, ABC. Accepting the Emmy, Sabina Gebremadine, Coordinating Producer. Thank you so much to the Academy. Uh, I'm accepting this award on behalf of our amazing scenic de designer, Chad Phillips, um, from our very beautiful ABC News, Soul of a Nation Honor Day performance. Thank you to Chad and our entire team on Soul of a Nation, and I'm so honored to stand up here in front of all of you tonight. Thank you. Our next category is for the Outstanding Politics and Government Documentary, where our nominees this year contextualize political realities in both the US and abroad, in Venezuela, Niger, and Ramallah. Here are the nominees. Three, two, one, two, unredacted, ABC. Obama, in pursuit of a more perfect union, HBO documentary films, HBO. A la calle, HBO Max, HBO. Mayor, POV, PBS. Turning Point, 9-11 and the War on Terror, Netflix. And the Emmy goes to Mayor, POV, PBS. Accepting the Emmy, David Ossett, director and producer. جاي على تصريح دينيس الأخير اللي قال إنه أنا جاي عشان أحمي المسيحيين في فلسطين في إشي هيك ترجع عليه بما معناه إنه إحنا ما بنطلب حماية أحد كمسيحيين إحنا بنطلب حماية العالم كله من إجراءات الاحتلال. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, First, I'd like to thank POV for broadcasting Mayor on PBS. I'm not sure I'd have a career without public television, so I'm very grateful to them. Uh, second, I'd like to dedicate this award to anyone who has the courage to stand publicly with Palestinian rights in the West. Um, it shouldn't be so hard to do in a free country. Uh, and, and finally, I accept this award on behalf of my dear friend, Mayor Musa Hadid, his wonderful family, and the incredible people of Ramallah who helped me make this film. Thank you. Having the opportunity to lay out investigative storytelling in a feature-length film for the audience puts vast power in the hands of a documentarian. The power comes with great pressure and great potential for impact. Here's a look at those who truly stood out in meeting the challenge. In the category of Outstanding Investigative Documentary, the nominees are... Assassins, Stars. Escaping Eritrea, Frontline, PBS. In the Shadow of 9-11, Frontline, PBS. The Forever Prisoner, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. The Line, Apple TV Plus. And the Emmy goes to The Forever Prisoner, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Accepting the Emmy, Alex Gibney, director, producer, and writer. For nearly 20 years, 
Abu Zubaydah has been in U.S. custody. In all that time, the man with one eye and one good leg has remained mostly incommunicado. I can see some of his drawings. I can read censored letters and the briefs of his lawyers. But I cannot talk to him. Thank you so much to the Academy for this great honor. Uh, thank you to our wonderful partners at HBO who were always so supportive. Uh, and thank you to this extraordinary team that did such a magnificent job of, of, uh, of making this film. You know, this is about Abu Zubaydah, the uh, patient zero of the CIA's torture program. And just, b just before they tortured him, there was a, a memo that went back that said, we're going to hold you incommunicado for the remainder of your life. Uh, he's at Guantanamo now, but I received a message from his lawyer today saying that I think I can say that his lawyers are looking for a country to take him in preparation for his release, which means that there may be a time when he will no longer be incommunicado. Thank you very much for this great award. This year was the rookie year for our next category, and the submissions did not disappoint. In the category of Outstanding Crime and Justice Documentary, the nominees are... Buried, Showtime. Life of Crime, 1984 to 2020, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. The Murders at Starved Rock, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. The Slow Hustle, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Guns, Trafficked with Mariana Von Zeller, National Geographic. And the Emmy goes to Life of Crime, 1984 to 2020, HBO Documentary Films. Accepting the Emmy, John Alpert, director. Look at the place where Rob is at, and look at Rob right here and his conditions of being on drugs, man. If you don't straighten out herself, this is where it's gonna die at. That's where you gonna find him dead at, right at this house right here, this abandoned building. Thank you very much. It's really nice to see everybody again. Thank you to the Academy for bringing us back together. Thank you, HBO. 36 years is a long time to stick with anybody, especially with this project. Everybody who's a documentarian can really appreciate that. Thank you very much. I want to thank uh, our editors, Pat McMahon, Naomi Mizuguchi, my daughter, who from the age of seven was on the streets in Newark with me, Filming this, luckily she's not a documentarian anymore. <laughs> I want to thank everybody at DCTV. You know DCTV, it's a big team. Most of all, I want to thank Rob, Freddie, and Delirious. We sacrificed in this failed war against drugs. They gave their lives. And we got to do something about this because it kills more Americans than all our wars put together. And on a good note, you saw these commercials here. Here's a commercial. Please come to the DC TV Super Cinema. All documentaries, all the time, we built it for you. Thank you. Our next category looks at the stories that stood out in their examination of the forces that shape society and culture. The scope is so vast, it's a true honor to rise to the top. In the category of Outstanding Social Issue Documentary, the nominees are... Dreamland, The Burning of Black Wall Street, CNN Films, CNN. End of the Line, The Women of Standing Rock, Fuse. A Thousand Cuts, Frontline, PBS. 
In the Dark of the Valley, MSNBC Films, MSNBC. To Live and Die in Alabama, The New York Times presents FX. Pray Away, Netflix. And the Emmy goes to a thousand cuts, Frontline PBS. Accepting the Emmy, Ramona Diaz, director, writer, and producer. For me, it's about two things, abuse of power and weaponization of the law. This isn't just about me, and it's not just about Rappler. I'll be very transparent, because I have done nothing. Sorry. Oh my goodness, okay, um, so Rainy told me to think of some, something to say, but I was, I'm, you know, I'm superstitious, so I didn't think of anything to say, but, um, uh, but looking out, you know, at all of you live, I've, all, I've been thinking a lot about our relevance, right, in the age of disinformation and in the age of like one minute TikTok videos. Are we still relevant? But I look out here and tonight, I feel like, yes, we are. We're heard, we're seen, and we take up space. So to the entire doc community, it's so great to see you tonight live. So many people to thank, and everyone on this stage, right? Uh, Moto, Julie, Chris, thank you. Um, Jeff and Gabriel, who shot the film, and sometimes not very safe in the Philippines. So thank you for um, agreeing to come on this journey. And of course, Leah Marino, who's edited all my films and edited this film. So, <laughs> cannot do it without this woman. And of course, um, all the supporters, but most especially Frontline, Rainy, Arison Rath, and the entire team. Um, gosh, I too, like David said, I too wouldn't have a career without public media. So thank you so much. Uh, uh, Frontline. Thank you. Yes. American Insurrection. Frontline, in partnership with ProPublica and Berkeley Journalism's investigative reporting program, PBS. So this is, you know, a t-shirt in reference to the mass slaughter of Jewish people during the Holocaust um, that stands for six million wasn't enough. You know, their, their view is not to deny the Holocaust, but to say the Holocaust didn't go far enough. And so he's flying Proud Boys colors and these clearly neo-Nazi ideas here. A Choice of Weapons, inspired by Gordon Parks. HBO Documentary Films, HBO. He can take something that's so negative, but when you first digest it and look at it, before you start to unpack everything, it's like super warm and it just like blows you away. I think he was really good at even things that might have been uncomfortable for as a black person to capture, but he has this thing where the way he frames stuff, it draws you in and it makes you want to have a conversation. Like here, behind the scenes of The Walking Dead. When we break down clothes, we tumble it with trisodium phosphate, rock salt, and dish detergent. We stitched together images of our model and created a 3D set that could be walked through in a VR headset. We're able to turn 12 walkers into a thousand walker board. STEM can create new worlds on and off the screen. What will you make with STEM? Get inspired at shecanstem.com. The 43rd Annual News and Documentary Emmy Awards are brought to you by Vimeo, the official OTT platform of the National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences. I feel like 
the energy down here was so amazing, I had to come get a taste of it. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like I was right. You guys do smell good. You guys smell amazing. Uh, I'm a host of the people. As you can see, I'm down here kicking it with you guys. But I have to say, you know, is anyone else getting older or is it just me? I think, like, a lot of us have been in this business for quite some time. And as we get older, you know, it's going to be a bit more difficult to travel across the world and tell these amazing stories, taking your Pelican cases on the flights, <laughs> trying to board with diamond medallions so you can have the overhead compartment space <laughs> for your camera gear. So what I'm trying to say, folks, is at some point, we got to pass the baton to the young people. And we have to teach them how to run with a baton. And so what I'd like to do is introduce the winner of the Nada's Inclusion Scholarship, which awards $10,000. Do you know how many mini, v, mini DV tapes I could have bought with $10,000 back in the day? It awards $10,000 to a student pursuing a career in any aspect of the television industry who identifies as black, indigenous, or a person of color. And our recipient this year is Joseph Machowski from Battlefield High School in Battlefield, Virginia. Wait. You guys are just going to clap again when I finish. He's enrolled as a freshman at Belmont University in Nashville, Tennessee. Let's take a look at some of his work. All right, right this way, sir. Okay, well, uh, we'll pull this way and we'll get it fixed up for you. All right, appreciate it, man. All right, sweet. Luke? Yes, sir. Gonna be quick? I can make it happen. You can handle this? Yes, sir. All right, don't waste my time. Why well, won't? All right. Joining us now is Joseph Machowski. You know, words can't even describe how much of an honor it is to be up here talking in front of all of you and representing the Hispanic community with this film that I made. I mean, just talking to all you legends. I can't even believe I'm still up here. Um, but now this scholarship has aided me in going to college and has fin financially made it possible for me to go to college, but it means a lot more to me than that because for as long as I can remember, I've always had the dream of getting into the film and television industry. And now I'm at Belmont University studying film and television production in one of the greatest cities in the world, Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> New York's all right, I guess, too. <laughs> no offense. Um, but with that being said, I'd like to thank a few people. First of all, I'd like to thank my friends from back home who helped me make this short film, and I'd like to thank you for accepting McDonald's and Big Macs as payment. <laughs> I would also like to thank my family, and especially my loving parents, for always supporting me from the beginning. No matter what it was, if it was acting or music or film, they've always been there to support me. And finally, and it's insane that I get to say this, but I would like to thank the Academy. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you for your dazzling work, Joseph, and good luck at school. We can't wait to see more of your films. Go forth and prosper, young fella. <laughs> now, speaking of talent, we have an Oscar winner in the building tonight. Chai Vassarelli, who directs and produces with her husband, Jimmy Chin, and you guys have heard of Free Solo, right? It won like 
everything. The best documentary feature at the Academy Awards in 2019, plus seven primetime Emmys. Chai is here tonight for Nat Geo with the astonishing film, The Rescue, which details the against all odds story of the enthralling rescue of 12 boys and their coach from deep inside a flooded cave in Northern Thailand. Her latest project, the series Edge of the Unknown with Jimmy Chin, just premiered this month on Nat Geo and Disney Plus. <laughs> I see some of you guys have paid your subscriptions, yes. <laughs> here to take us into the unknown of the next few categories, please welcome Chai Vassarelli. Thank you, Alzo. Um, well, hello, all you fellow gluttons for punishment who make documentary films. I call it, I call it kind of our Sisyphusian dud, where you dig yourself into a hole and then hope your editor gets you out. Um, thank you, Bob. Um, but seriously, um, it's so special to gather in person and see so many um, familiar faces responsible for such important documentary work. So let's get to those achievements. <laughs> In the category of outstanding interactive media, the nominees are David Attenborough's First Life, Alchemy Immersive, MetaQuest. Kingdom of Plants with David Attenborough, Alchemy Immersive, MetaQuest. Assault on Democracy, Paths to the Insurrection, CNN Investigates and CNN Visuals, CNN. Postcards from a World on Fire, the New York Times Opinion Video, the New York Times. Re-educated, the New Yorker. And the Emmy goes to Re-educated, The New Yorker. Accepting the Emmy, Sam Wilson, director. Above the door was a TV set. We would watch TV for two hours every day. It would always broadcast shows about places Tam Xi Jinping had visited. You get bored, but even as you are bored, others around you are studying. <clears throat> All right, it is heavy. Uh, okay, so I want to thank uh, The New Yorker. And, uh, yep, good, good, good magazine. Uh, Monica and Su Jung, <laughs> uh, who believed in the project. It was really, in, in doing it in this really innovative way, uh, they really ushered us through it. Uh, the people who shared their stories with us, Amajan Urbiket and Ormbeck, uh, who allowed us to weave together their stories and bring us into the, the internment camps in Xinjiang, uh, the uh, Ben, the reporter, um, whose dedication on the piece really allowed us to tell the story. Matt, who hand-painted every inch of what you see in the film. Nick Rubin, uh, who's, and uh, Dirt Empire, whose production studio helped us bring it together. John Bernson, whose ambisonic audio and uh, score put it together. Pulitzer Center, Online News Association, uh, iBeam, and uh, Mike Luo, David Rode, and David Remnick for um, supporting visual journalism. Thank you. I mean, right? Like, it feels like a Sisyphusian situation. It's like this is a miracle that any doc gets made. Um, so what do we mean when we talk about innovation in interactive media? You could tell me. Um, this year, we were treated to new ways to explore and interact with investigations and news stories, as well as groundbreaking experiences of our physical world, from virtual reality to 3D modeling. In the category of outstanding interactive media, innovation 
The nominees are. Unresolved, Frontline and Ado Ado Pictures, PBS. Goliath, Playing with Reality, Oculus. Inaccessible Cities, AJ Contrast, Al Jazeera Digital. The Changing Same, American Pilgrimage, POV, PBS. With the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre Destroyed, The New York Times. And the Emmy goes to Unresolved, Frontline and Atto Atto Pictures from PBS. Accepting the Emmy, Tamara Shogalu, Creative Director. The web interactive is designed to be a quilted forest and the user acts as a source of light when they're traveling through. So it starts out kind of dark and, and lifeless and the more you interact and the more you learn of the story of the individual, you bring light to their chapter and it acts as a memorial in a way. I'm back. <laughs> Hi. Oh, wow. Um, okay, <laughs> 30 seconds. Uh, I guess the, the first thing I want to do is thank the families who allowed us to share these stories. A couple of days ago, I got a message from a close family friend who congratulated me and then asked me if I had come across the name Willie Edwards. Um, and I immediately recognized the name and I sent her the component of the project that touched on his story. She told me that you know he was her cousin who had been murdered and that her family had had a family um, reunion in Alabama to commemorate him. And I'm so honored that I was able to be part of an incredible project to commemorate all of these lives and hopefully um, bring light and to some of the, the these stories and um, and bring attention to help solve some of these cases. So I want to thank. Frontline, um, Rainey, you're incredible. I'm in awe of your leadership. Um, Don Porter, you're a force, and I'm so lucky to have worked with you. Um, the rest of the Frontline team, um, and, yeah, Andrew, Andrew, Michelle, Colin, Carla, Lauren, Sarah, um, Dan, Anthony. Um, so grateful to have worked with you. Um, my team at Auto Auto Pictures, uh, Riyadh, uh, Marcella, Kuka, Lucy, Jamari, Crystal, Nathan. Um, it really takes a village to do this when you make these projects happen. Um, Tosh, Pilar, Alice, James, Lai, um, Chika, and Reza. I'm, I'm so grateful. I really hope you all go check it out. I'm thankful to PBS, CPB, um, my family, and friends and everyone who has made this project happen. Thank you. Okay, so let's take a look at the awe-inspiring cinematography where those behind the camera have mastered the commitment, the style, the savvy, I mean, the balls, it takes to bring an indelible moment to life through their lens. In the category of Outstanding Cinematography Documentary, the nominees are... Buried, Showtime. The First Wave, National Geographic. The Elephant and the Termite, Nature, PBS. Puma's Legends of the Ice Mountains, Nature, PBS. Puff, Wonders of the Reef, Netflix. The Reason I Jump, Netflix. And the Emmy goes to the first wave, <laughs> National Geographic. Accepting the Emmy, Ross McDonald, Director of Photography. It's been a sleepless night. As a father, you're supposed to protect your family.
3 Diego Faison. much. Um, this was really a once-in-a-lifetime filmmaking experience uh, to capture firsthand the hopes and fears, the tragedies and the victories of the early days of the COVID pandemic uh, was an indelible experience. And uh, I shared it with Brian Dawson, Alex Pritz, Thorts and Thilo, our wonderful director and cinematographer, Matt Heinemann, for everyone at our time, participant, Neon, and everyone who supported this film, thank you. And mostly for the staff at uh, Long Island Jewish Hospital, for the patients and families who allowed us into their lives at their most fragile moment to create this incredible film. Thank you. Next up are the STEM documentaries. Um, here are the nominees in the category of Outstanding Science and Technology Documentary. The Hunt for Planet B, CNN Films, CNN. Down to Earth, The Astronaut's Perspective, NASA TV. Fathom, Apple TV Plus. Coded Bias, Independent Lens, PBS. Picture a Scientist, Nova, PBS. I want to see all of these films. Um, and so the Emmy goes to The Hunt for Planet B, <laughs> CNN Film, CNN. Accepting the Emmy, Nathaniel Kahn, director. Good speed, guys, good speed. Someone telling us where to stop. This is the largest space telescope humanity has ever conceived of. Thank you so much to the Academy for this tremendous honor. And thank you to our friends at CNN Films, Amy and Courtney. Um, we certainly wouldn't be here without you. And thank you to this incredible team who stands with me today. As we all know, filmmaking is a collaborative effort. And uh, I've, I've loved being with all these people for many years. Um, so thank you for being here with me. And. Um, I want to thank uh, some one person who's in here, Sandra Evers Manley, who was our executive producer, who who believed in this project from the beginning. And Carlene, are you here? Yeah. Carlene also, um, who believed in our in our film as an executive producer. Um, and thank you especially to to NASA and to all of the engineers and the scientists who have given so much of their lives to uh, make this incredible telescope, which is up there now, a hundred million miles away from the Earth bringing back these images that are telling us things about our origins, where we came from, where we're going, how we must somehow come together on this planet if we're going to long survive. Um, these are real, true heroes. We have one here from NASA, um, and these engineers and scientists, I spent five years with them uh, filming this film. And um, I must say that sort of at the end of the day, we are truly all made of stardust. We're all made of the same stuff. And in this world, we must find a way to realize that and to come together in a real way. It's not pablum, it's real. We must, we must find some way to really treasure this earth and the fact that we're all human beings on this planet and we are all made of the stuff that we see in those photographs. We come up from the stars and we will return to them. But while we're here, let's try to find a way to get together and love this planet. Thank you. Hey. 
Hi. Um, well, that was exciting. I can't I'm thinking about the stars now. Um, so nature documentaries give us the opportunity to delight in the wonders of our planet, untouched wilderness, which I know well, a rich tapestry of color and texture in the lives of majestic animals like flamingos, penguins, and cheetahs. Here's what the judges deem the best of the year. In the category of outstanding nature documentary, the nominees are Lucy the Human Chimp, HBO, HBO Max. The Elephant and the Termite, Nature, PBS. My Garden of a Thousand Bees, Nature, PBS. Playing with Sharks, Disney Plus. Puff, Wonders of the Reef, Netflix. And the Emmy goes to Puff and the Wonders of the Reef, Netflix. Accepting the Emmy, Pita Ayers, writer and producer. This is Puff's world a vibrant coral reef, home to thousands of creatures. But to see what Puff sees, you have to look closer. Even closer. Because the story of every coral reef starts with its tiniest creatures. Thank you so much. Um, this is absolutely amazing. There's a, there's a team at home that's watching live feed at the moment that is going to be going absolutely wild right now. Um, I'd <laughs> wild. Uh, I just need, want to acknowledge the people who aren't standing on stage with us, our fellow nominees, our director Nick Robinson, um, our co-producers and cinematographers, Pete West, Daniel Stupin and Louise Pillane, and our lead editor Bobby Hansel, who did an amazing job with a, a very, very tricky um, material to put together. Um, obviously, the team at uh, Netflix, Jason, Chloe and Johnny, and everybody else there who um, helped make this thing happen for us, as well as our other, uh, our other investors, Screen Australia and Screen Queensland. Um, and also, uh, Rose Byrne, who did just such a beautiful job um, bringing it to life in the narration. Um, we're so privileged to have been able to make this film when the entire world was just completely shut down uh, and to be able to use that time to tell a story about how complex and how special uh, our planet is and how important it is to protect it uh, and it's just such an honour to, <laughs> to be able to take this home for, for that story. Thank you so much. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a perfect segue to our Lifetime Achievement recipient this evening. Here now to introduce this year's honoree is a director and filmmaker who loves to take audiences on journeys through time and scale, making the invisible visible. Ooh, that's deep. That's, that's deep. Here is the, cre I, he is the creative eye behind some of the most breathtaking time-lapse cinematography on screens big and small, work that celebrates life and our deep connection with nature. As we saw in this film, Fantastic Fungi and his current release, Gratitude Revealed. Please welcome Louis Schwartzberg. Wow, what a gift and joy it is to be here tonight to honor the greatest nature storyteller of our times. Tonight's honoree inspired me to make films that celebrate nature's wonders. As a kid growing up in Brooklyn, I never really experienced nature. I think my only white water experience was racing popsicle sticks down the gutter. <laughs> Yet his programs expanded my vision, opened my heart to protect and celebrate life. David Attenborough made us laugh and cry 
by sharing the true natures of our stories, giving us context to see the world from a plant or an animal point of view, inspiring curiosity and wonder. David made us feel connected to all living beings, making us want to protect life and to create a sustainable planet. He goes about his craft with humility and grace, letting nature take the spotlight in a way that draws in viewers of all ages. He makes the how behind the wow. Let's take a look. That forest below us stretched unbroken for several hundred miles up north to the River Orinoco, and right down south to the Amazon and the Mato Grosso. In fact, it's one of the largest unexplored and, as far as I'm concerned, exciting areas in the world. Standing and exchanging a glance with a gorilla than any other animal I know. How about that? <laughs> wow. From that initial injury, the whole of this little plant is aware that something has happened. I 
I'm doing what I want to do. And it's just remarkable that it could be seen as being a career. <laughs> I'm extremely lucky that people should want me to go on doing it. David broadens our horizons by taking us to all the corners of the earth, making us want to protect our one and only home. As a special treat this evening, we received this message for David. Sir David, there aren't enough awards to give you. I hear you're getting a Lifetime Achievement Award. Well, plus a lot of others, I hope. But I think you've got those already. I remember so well uh, having a lunch together at the Krug Awards a long time ago now. My admiration, and that I know of thousands of people for you, is unbounded. Uh, now we've just started watching The Frozen Planet. I don't know how you managed to do it, but I hope I go on like that. I send you much love, and I hope you have every kind of award and treat and surprise that you deserve. Sorry, I'm not there. Please help me honor this year's Lifetime Achievement Award recipient. David is watching at home and is sorry he couldn't be here in person, but he sent this message. It has been my very good fortune during the 70 years that I've spent in broadcasting to have written words and spoken words that accompany some of the most beautiful, mind-blowing, terrifying, alarming, dramatic scenes ever seen on television. But everybody here will know perfectly well that those programmes are the work of great teams, of camera persons and recordists and directors, of great teams of people who work together to produce those unforgettable programmes. But there's somebody else that I would like to thank, and that is the people who find space in the network to show those programmes. Because the world at the moment is in crisis, and it is of the greatest importance that everyone everywhere in every nation should be able to know how the world works, what we are doing to the world, and how we can put that right. But meanwhile, thank you again for this, and for all of you who have helped me in producing programmes in which we've all taken part. Thank you. Thank you. The filmmakers and producers here tonight are so grateful for your dedication to the craft and the cause of appreciating and preserving our planet. Thank you and congratulations. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. This is Katya. This is Maurice. Tomorrow will be their last day. In this fire. Two lovers found a home. Experience it in IMAX. Rated PG. The 43rd Annual News and Documentary Emmy Awards are brought to you by WeWork, the official workplace of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. And by Frontify, the official brand management platform of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences.
four hours at the Capitol. HBO documentary films. HBO. It was pretty much a fight like the entire time. We had a lot of officers, they got injured, they couldn't see, they couldn't breathe. And, you know, I would tell them, I'm sorry, but you got to get back in the fight. We're about to lose this. In the same breath, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. But I can clearly imagine how this could have begun differently. Now y'all know y'all wrong for laughing at that we work. <laughs> you know? uh, I giggled a little bit too backstage though. How y'all doing? Everybody's okay? Yeah? I just want to uh, give words of gratitude. The energy in here has been amazing and the show has been great thus far. We thank you for your undivided attention to the folks on stage. I know sometimes as things get long and drawn out, but you guys are hanging in there and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, so right now, I want to introduce you to the people who have actually been dominating the stage tonight. These folks you've seen, they've touched every award that's hit the stage. And these are our fantastic Emmy envoys. Tabitha Young and Jesse Price are graduate students at the School for Visual Arts MFA Social Documentary <laughs> Program here in New York. And the SBA SOC doc gives emerging talent the opportunity. Where y'all going? Come back here. <laughs> They're so used to giving people the Emmy and then walking off stage. And you got to learn to accept your shine because you're going to be getting these Emmys one day. You know what I'm saying? So SBA SOC doc gives emerging talent the opportunity to work closely with established filmmakers, honing their skills for a career in the industry. There are several alumni and faculty films among the nominees tonight. So this is when you were supposed to come in and, and take a bow. But now you can take a bow and you get your, your accolades again. <laughs> Thanks, Tabitha and Jesse. And uh, let me dish out some more thanks. Before we get to our next category, I want to take a moment to thank some other very important people. All of our Emmy judges. The Emmy Awards really depend on the selfless efforts of your peers, filmmakers and craftspeople who graciously volunteer their time to the competition. This year, 561 people served as judges. And since there are many of you in the room tonight, I'd like to ask those volunteers to stand up so your peers can thank you appropriately. Yes. So we salute you and we expect you to answer that email again next year when you have to watch all these docs again. <laughs> now, back to these golden statues in the category of outstanding research. The nominees are. Nine Eleven. I Was There, History Channel. 9-11, One Day in America, National Geographic. Street Gang, How We Got to Sesame Street, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Cured, Independent Lens, PBS. The Rescue, National Geographic. And the Emmy Award goes to the Rescue, National Geographic. Accepting the Emmy, Tanet Natasiri, Executive Producer.
caving is clearly about the exploration side of it. Some of the dives we do, you could be hours in, totally reliant on artificial light, artificial heating. It's like being in space. Probably the purest adventure you could have. Wow, um, I didn't expect this. Thank you so much, the academies, and um, thank you so much, National Geographic, for becoming a really amazing partner to us. And our amazing director, Shai Wasahali, and Jimmy Shin, as well as Bob Eisenhardt. I mean, this documentary was so difficult to make. I hope you know you guys understand it because it was involved in a lot of um, um, tricky, sensitive um, materials. And Bob did an amazing job and put it all together. And Chai really went into an extended length for a director to get this material. So she made sure that our team could have enough material to make a good documentary as accurately as possible. Thank you so much. In the enduring words of the great prophet James Baldwin, American history is longer, larger, more various, more beautiful, and more terrible than anything anyone has ever said about it. Our next group of nominees underscores that quote with their work this year in the category of Outstanding Historical Documentary. The nominees are Nine Eleven: One Day in America, National Geographic, The Black Church. This is our story. This is our song. PBS. Desert One History Channel. Downing of a Flag. PBS. The Neutral Ground. POV. PBS. And the Emmy goes to 9-11, One Day in America, National Geographic. Accepting the Emmy, Daniel Bogato, Series Director. And I could remember one lieutenant coming up to me. Uh, lieutenant from Engine 33, not saying a word. And we looked at each other, wondering if each of us was going to be okay. Hi, thanks. Thanks very much to the Academy and thanks to the voters. And a very special thanks to National Geographic for backing this project, especially to Carolyn and Hamish, who oversaw it from conception to delivery and were just absolutely brilliant. Um, I just wanted to say, when we began this project, the whole idea was we'd make a series about 9-11 and focusing just on that one day, six episodes. And at the beginning, we genuinely did not know what it was we would discover, what the series would reveal. And what it did reveal is that anywhere you looked that day, you would see stories of people helping each other, stories of courage, compassion, uh, self-sacrifice. And that was the kind of inspiring message that this kind of group of people, of incredibly talented archive researchers and editors and producers, and, and the whole crew who worked so hard to tell that story. And it was amazing seeing once it went out, how he connected with other people. And you know, this recognition has just been absolutely amazing. And finally, I just want to say thank to all our contributors, all the first responders, all the survivors who spoke to us on the phone for research, who um, agreed to appear on camera. They were our inspiration throughout, and we dedicate this to them. Thank you very much.
You know, unfortunately, in each one of these ceremonies, there comes a time where it's always hard to find the right words to say goodbye to the cherished legends from our industry who have passed away. Please join us in this solemn but celebratory moment as we remember our friends, colleagues, and loved ones from both the news and documentary community who are no longer with us. May they rest in peace and know that their contributions live in eternity. Obama, In Search of a More Perfect Union, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Health care reform was a challenging issue for many presidents. Seven presidents had tried, seven presidents had failed. Um, Barack Obama was determined to get it done. It is uh, not only great to be back in Raleigh, it is also nice to get out of Washington. The Line, Apple TV Plus. I just heard like, dude, these guys are talking a lot of shit about you and they're saying that you were dangerous and you did some unethical stuff on deployment. We were not aware of how much the undercurrent would pick up and become a freaking storm. Our next presenter of the evening is Dan Reed, here on behalf of HBO. He's a director and producer of In the Shadow of 9-11 and a Primetime Emmy Award winner for Leaving Neverland. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Reed.
Thanks, Elsa. This has been an exciting evening so far, so let's jump right in. Our next category salutes the talented people who work with the sounds. We all see pictures through sounds, don't we, um, of our documentaries to figure out that perfect capture and mix of words, music, and the location world. In the category of outstanding sound, the nominees are... Nine Eleven. I Was There, History Channel. Fathom, Apple TV Plus. The First Wave, National Geographic. Just Mr. Soul, Independent Lens, PBS. Justifying my the Reason I Jump, Netflix. Then we go in the studio Watch the, the Sound thing. with Mark Ronson, Apple TV Plus. And the Emmy goes to Fathom, <laughs> Apple TV Plus. Accepting the Emmy, Brad Engelking, re-recording mixer. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, our, our, our job as, you know, sound people is really to help you guys tell your stories. And um, this was such a cool story to tell, so I really want to thank Drew and Megan, Drew the director, Megan Gilbride, the producer. Um, we had a huge, very fortunate team on this. All of us worked really, really hard. Um, I'm gonna, a couple of people I need to specifically thank. So uh, I want to thank Apple, uh, I want to thank Sandbox, um, Brandon and Ted and the whole team at TBD. Um, I want to thank uh, uh, my family really quick, sorry, uh, Riker and Lyndon. Um, and Nick, would you quickly uh, thank the people on your crew? Oh, I'm sorry, two more, sorry. Glenn and also Bastian, thanks guys. Thank you, I'd like to thank the London team, uh, Ben Baird and everyone at Aquari Aquarium <laughs> and, uh, and also Lawrence Greed, thank you. Continuing with the audio portion of the program, let's take a look at the original scores, the hidden storytellers that stood out this year. In the category of outstanding music composition, the nominees are... Nine Eleven, One Day in America, National Geographic. Camp Confidential, America's Secret Nazis, Netflix. The First Wave. National Geographic. The Real Charlie Chaplin, Showtime. The Reason I Jump, Netflix. Woman in Motion, Paramount Plus. And the Emmy goes to The Reason I Jump, Netflix. Yeah. Accepting the Emmy, Nainita Desai, composer. From your point of view, the world of autism must look like a deeply mysterious place. So, my big hope is that by writing this book, I can help to explain in my own way what goes on in my mind. Um, thank you to the Academy and the voters. It's such an honor to be amongst this list of amazing fellow composers, nominees, and remarkable films. You've made a girl from South London very proud. <laughs> Working on this film was a true collaborative experience, which is the heart of what we do as musical storytellers. I'd like to thank the director, Jerry Rothwell, all the producers, Jeremy Deer, Stevie Lee, 
Al Morrow, Stu Le Marichal, and the entire team who made this film possible, particularly the sound team, Nick Ryan, Sarah, and Ben, to all the musicians who made special contributions to the score. I couldn't have done this without them. Thank you also go to the autistic people in the film, Naoki, Joss, Justina, Ben and, Emmy, ben and Emma, who are watching tonight, I believe, and Jim and Amrit, who share their experience and have given us insight into their perception of the world. And finally, I'd like to thank my husband, who is my true north, and without him, I doubt that I would actually be a composer today because he, he gave me so much confidence to, be, to follow my true passion. Uh, so thank you very, very much. Our next category commemorates the documentaries that tell stories that are unfolding in real time, which is no easy task. In the category of outstanding current affairs documentary, the nominees are... One hundred thirty-seven shots. Netflix. Convergence. Courage in a crisis. Netflix. China's COVID secrets. Frontline. PBS. American Insurrection. Frontline. In partnership with ProPublica and Berkeley Journalism's investigative reporting program. PBS. In the same breath. HBO documentary films. HBO. The Rescue, National Geographic. And the Emmy goes to The Rescue, National Geographic. Accepting the Emmy, Chai Vassarelli, co-director. got them to do a motivational exercise. Everybody say, yeah! Yeah! Excellent. Say, say, hello, Americans. Hello, America. Hello, Thai Navy. Hello, Thai Navy. Say, hello, Australians. Hello, Australia. Hello, Chinese. Hello, Chinese. And thank you, everybody else. And thank you, everybody else. Thank you very much. Um, just this film was probably the hardest film um, we've ever made, and you know what is a director without this an incredible team? And so just you know, Jimmy and I would really like to you know to extend some heartfelt thanks to our closest collabor creative collaborator Bob Eisenhart, who's edited Free Solo, Meru, and now The Rescue, um, to our incredible producer. John Batsik, who trusted us with this film. Um, I would love to thank Ian Seabrook, who did all those amazing reenactments that were underwater, and Tanet Natsiri, who were, who, who, I don't know, he was the glue that kept us all together. Um, the film, you know, it's, it's, like a, it's like a bittersweet thing that the message of the rescue only seems to become more poignant as days go by. Where it's, a where it's a story about how so many different nations, colors, creeds, religions came together to achieve something that was truly impossible and to rescue these you know, 13 individuals no one ever met before, they were strangers. Um, so that's said again, like a big thank you to National Geographic for trusting us with the story. Thank you to Courtney Monroe. Thank you to Carolyn Bernstein. Thank you to Chris Albert. Thank you to Lauren Schwartz, Anna Barnes who runs our company. Um, Bonnie, my parents, mom and dad, our children, um, and I guess most of all to um, my wonderful filmmaking partner, Jimmy Chin, who is unfortunately not here tonight. So anyway, thank you all. Well, I don't envy the judges in our next category. What all of these filmmakers pulled off is inspiring, and to elevate just one is not an enviable task. In the category of Outstanding Direction documentary, the nominees are... The First Wave, National Geographic. 
In the same breath, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Simple as Water, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Misha and the Wolves, Netflix. The Rescue, National Geographic. And the Emmy goes to The Rescue, National Geographic. Accepting the Emmy, Chai Vassarelli, co-director. Total silence between me and John, just a look into each other's faces thinking, we may be the only ones that ever see them. That was a distinct possibility. The whole journey back, all I was thinking was, what on earth are we going to do now? Thank you um, to the Academy. I guess I just would like to t share, given that I've got some more air time, um, I would like to share just a story about what made it so difficult. So basically we were making this film during the pandemic and we had heard a rumor from the divers, um, John Philanthon and Rick Stanton and Dr. Harris, that the Thai Navy SEALs had filmed um, parts of the rescue. And, you know, it's just something that I think is like at the core of all these films we've seen celebrated tonight. Um, that like that kind of like relentless drive, that idea that you have to tell the story that will push you as a filmmaker to, I don't know, go to the edge of the earth to try to do the right thing. And, you know, so, you know, we tried everything to negotiate with the Thai Navy SEALs um, over Zoom and it doesn't really work out. You know, it's like, it, there are a lot of things that can be done, but you cannot negotiate with the Thai Navy SEALs um, over Zoom. And so finally, once like borders opened up and we had vaccines and were allowed to travel again, um, Tanet joined me. Um, actually, I was like, I'm going. And he's like, you can't go alone. Um, and we literally kind of knocked on the door of the Admiral of the Thai Navy SEALs. And we're like, we're here. Hello. Um, and it ended up, we thought it was gonna be like 90 minutes, maybe 50 minutes. It was 87 hours. The film was supposed to be locked June 1st. The footage arrived July 1st. Um, and it just was one of those things that every time when it seemed too difficult, we'd be like, but they achieved this crazy, impossible rescue. The least we can do is make a proper film. So again, big thank you to National Geographic. I forgot to thank our other producer, PJ Van Sandwich, who's not here tonight. Um, um, thank you. Thank you all. Paper and Glue, MSNBC Films, MSNBC. This is the eye of a woman who's a dreamer. A dreamer is someone who had come to the United States when she was very little with her parents, but illegally. Her name is Myra. I told her not to come because I said there's a big chance we all get arrested. But not only she came, she came with her mother. The Rescue, National Geographic. And then suddenly I saw a light flash. John immediately got out of the camera. Yeah, best you can. There's nothing like being with your friends at your favorite gathering spot. And there's nothing like the smooth taste of Four Roses bourbon. Four Roses, official bourbon of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. The 43rd Annual News and Documentary Emmy Awards are brought to you by Delta, the official airline of the News and Documentary Emmys.
know y'all are a funny crowd. Y'all ready for some bourbon already, huh? Four roses bourbon. They didn't pay me for that. It was a five daffodils whiskey. How about that? I don't know. Uh, folks, we're almost home. We're almost home. Uh, and I know at this point, the idea of short is kind of like a foreign concept, but what we're going to do now is honor short documentaries. They may be a shorter watch, but we all know short documentaries are long on story, creativity, and craft. Here are the nominees in the category of Outstanding Short Documentary. A Broken House, The New Yorker Documentary, POV Shorts, The New Yorker, PBS. The Last Cruise, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Takeover, Op Docs, The New York Times. Through Our Eyes, Apart, HBO, HBO Max. Through Our Eyes, Shelter, HBO, HBO Max. And the Emmy goes to Through Our Eyes, Apart, HBO, HBO Max. Accepting the Emmy, Anya Rouse, producer. The morning is so beautiful because it's so quiet, so nice. You can think about stuff. I myself can I do better, and how will I do better? If everything could go right, just how I plan. I'm only 10, but I think a lot of stuff, and I know a lot of stuff from my age. Wow, what an incredible honor. Um, this is such a thrill. Uh, we want to thank our partners at Sesame Workshop who put at the center of incredible storytelling young people and um, who birthed this story. Um, our director is Gita Gandavir and Rudy Valdez. <laughs> Just an incredible intimacy and a beautiful relationship with our families um, who most importantly, Naji and Lyric and Eric, who are the young people who are in this film um, who talk about the impacts of incarceration on their lives, uh, which has impacted more than five million young people who should never experience that. And um, it's, it's been an incredible honor to get to work with them and get to know them. Um, and they inspire all of us. HBO Max, thank you so much. Um, Viri Lieberman, our editor, our incredible crew. Um, and we also just want to be just just incredible gratitude to Smriti and all of the, to Shelter and to all of the parts of the series of Through Our Eyes. This is like really a collaborative effort and an ensemble of, of films, so see all of them. Am I forgetting anyone? <laughs> Just incredible gratitude and thank you so much. We made it, folks. We made it. And just so you know, uh, every winner tonight actually got a bottle of that bourbon. <laughs> so you need to identify them in the crowd and meet them after the ceremony. So in the category of best documentary, to refresh your memory for this last award, these are the nominees. The First Wave, National Geographic. A Thousand Cuts, Frontline, PBS. American Insurrection, Frontline, in partnership with ProPublica and Berkeley Journalism's investigative reporting program, PBS. 
A Choice of Weapons, inspired by Gordon Parks. HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Four Hours at the Capitol, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. In the Same Breath, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. Obama, in pursuit of a more perfect union, HBO Documentary Films, HBO. The Line, Apple TV Plus. Paper and Glue, MSNBC Films, MSNBC. The Rescue, National Geographic. The Emmy for Outstanding Best Documentary goes to The First Wave, National Geographic. Accepting the Emmy, Matthew Heineman, Director, Producer. Sorry, we have a uh, big team here. <laughs> um, just incredibly, incredibly humbled to be in this room. Thank you for this award. Um, thank you to our amazing, amazing, amazing team. Um, I'm gonna try not to cry. Huge thanks to my producing partners, Leslie Norville and Jenna Millman, to our film participants, to our film participants, Dr. DJ. Ahmed and Alexis. Uh, Brussels. Uh, Kelly and Carl, wherever you are. <laughs> um, to our partners in Nat Geo, participant in Neon for believing in this film. We feel just incredibly honored uh, that we had the opportunity to document through a brave group of doctors, nurses, and patients over four terrifying months, the impact of this pandemic. I hope this film will ulti ultimately be a testament to the power of the human spirit when faced with one of the greatest threats uh, the world has ever encountered. Again, just incredibly humbled. Thank you all so much. You guys might Wait, you, y'all might y'all might as well stay on stage because there's no way we're gonna get all of y'all off before I say goodnight. <laughs> it's like half the audience is up here. Congratulations to y'all. I mean, what what a night, yeah? <laughs> and we did it in under two hours. You know what I'm saying? So it's still time to go out and get loose, you know? 
So I want to thank uh, all of our presenters and congratulations to all the winners. And, you know, Sir David Attenborough, if you're really watching at home, it's time to go to bed, homie. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning. Y'all have a good night. Thank you very much. In all categories, the News and Documentary Emmy Awards are judged by members of the National Academy of Television, Arts and Sciences, Inc., or other experienced television professionals. Voting is conducted securely online by panels of industry peers. The results of all the secret voting are known only to the independent accounting firm of Lutz and Carr, LLP, and EY until the broadcast. Full competition rules and guidelines are available at the Emmys.tv. Next up on the Emmy Awards schedule, the first annual Children's and Family Emmy Awards on Sunday, December 11th at the Wilshire Ebell Theater in Los Angeles and on watch.theemmys.tv and the Emmys apps. This is your announcer, Elena Hurst, wishing you a wonderful evening.